Most people believe that the only way to escape the clamor and stress of everyday life is just to go to a quiet place and relax. They don't think of the underwater world as a suitable place to take refuge. In scuba diving, this idea not only becomes possible, but it becomes a need that only going underwater can satisfy. Taking your first breath underwater will be one of your greatest experiences because it's truly the only place where you can relax and explore a whole world apart from dry land. The weightless feeling that you get when you are fully submerged is only matched by the feeling that an astronaut gets when going into space. On the other hand, if you're not careful, you can get in some serious trouble. There are many dangers and medical conditions that are associated with diving. Even though there are so many people that dive, you can't just dive whenever you feel you want to. There are certain requirements that need to be met to become a scuba diver. Not to mention all of the equipment to keep you alive and breathing while underwater. One of my favorite parts of diving is putting on all of the gear. I personally am fascinated by diving because it's basically like exploring a world that most of the population has no idea exists. Certification is essential for safe and obviously legal diving. If you are interested in scuba diving, you should get certified as soon as possible because it's such a lifelong experience. You will be surprised at how many places you will travel that will allow you to dive. To become certified, there first is a classroom course where you will learn the basics of diving and the effects diving has on your body. If you have a busy schedule, however, you can take the course online. The classroom portion will prepare you for the five confined water dives. You do these in a pool or body of water with pool-like conditions. In these dives, you are tested on the 27 basic skills of scuba diving. After all of this, you finally get to test your skills with open water dives. In these dives, you will be tested on the same 27 skills, just in a real dive scenario. This is probably the best part of your certification. You can do your dives anywhere that you find interesting. You can do your dives in Lake Michigan, but why not go to an exotic place to start your diving adventures? In the classroom certification course, you will learn about all of the equipment that you need to stay safe underwater. The buoyancy compensation device, or BCD, is the piece of equipment that controls how buoyant you are underwater. Most of the other pieces of equipment connect to the BCD. You use the BCD to keep yourself off of the bottom of the ocean to protect wildlife. Also, when you inflate the BCD, you can rest comfortably at the surface. Your mask, fins, and snorkel are by far the lowest tech devices, but they are very important. The mask provides an airspace so you can see, and the fins allow you to swim with ease underwater. The snorkel is used only if you want to swim at the surface without using any air from your air tank. The regulators and air tank are two tools that are used to breathe. The regulator goes into your mouth, and the backup regulator is only used if your dive buddy runs out of air. Finally, there's the dive computer and wetsuit. The dive computer shows your depth and how much air you have left in your tank. It is usually just a wristwatch, but sometimes it is a hose with two gauges on it that is connected to your air tank. The wetsuit basically just protects you from any scrapes and in some cases keeps you warm. All of this equipment together weighs close to 50 pounds. When you go into the water, it's almost as if there's nothing on your back. Scuba diving is a very life or death sport. There are many dangers and medical conditions associated and caused by scuba diving. Many people believe that most of the dangers are caused by animals. This is almost never the case. Medical conditions are more common than any other danger. One of the most easily caused medical conditions is called barotrauma. In this condition, your lungs overexpand as a result of the pressure change. When the pressure that is pushing on you is decreased, the air in your lungs expands. If you hold your breath while ascending, your lungs could overexpand to the point that they collapse. This is a condition called pneumothorax and is caused by barotrauma. Pneumothorax always kills you immediately because of the lack of oxygen that is able to reach your cells. The air that we breathe is about 21% oxygen and the rest is basically just nitrogen. 
This is the same with the air that you breathe underwater. Nitrogen really doesn't have any effect on your body on dry land, but once nitrogen is under pressure, your body reacts to it as a narcotic. You start acting all giddy and uncoordinated, almost as if you are drunk. This is called nitrogen narcosis. It was discovered as early as Jacques Cousteau's time as he saw one of his dive buddies try to offer a fish his regulator to let the fish breathe. He described this disorienting condition as the rapture of the deep. Not only is there nitrogen in the air that we breathe, but there is dissolved nitrogen in our blood. Another thing that happens to nitrogen under pressure is it turns into a gas. Decompression sickness, or the bends, is an illness in which the nitrogen in your bloodstream turns into bubbles of nitrogen gas. This can be very dangerous as the bubble could pass through your heart and kill you. Also, the bubble can pass through your brain and cause an arterial gas embolism that can clog one of the small arteries in your brain. Once an artery is clogged, the blood starts to build up until it eventually bursts and you have a stroke. While decompression sickness can be very dangerous, it is very common and is not always as serious as death. The most important part of the air that we breathe is oxygen gas. Oxygen is what keeps our cells from dying, so most people think of it as perfectly safe. However, at around 218 feet in salt water, oxygen becomes toxic. Oxygen toxicity is the worst case scenario for anyone who dies. It is highly unlikely and should not keep you from diving, but it's very serious. It's so unlikely because when you become a certified open water diver, you aren't allowed to dive that deep. It's kind of weird to think that the main gas that keeps us alive can kill us without fail. Medical conditions can be very serious underwater if proper precautions are not taken or if they are not treated. You can prevent an arterial gas embolism as easily as preventing barotrauma. Never hold your breath, ever. If you don't hold your breath, then your lungs won't overexpand and you won't get air bubbles in your bloodstream. Now decompression sickness has a little bit more obscure prevention. New research shows that when you exercise, you release a substance that prevents you from getting the bends. This means that to reduce your chances of decompression sickness to the lowest possible amount, you should work out to about 90% of what you can roughly 24 hours before you die. Now we come to the most deadly condition associated with diving, oxygen toxicity. Having a seizure while underwater caused by oxygen toxicity can cause you to lose your regulator and drown. However, using a full face dive mask will eliminate the threat of you losing your regulator. If you dive with a high oxygen concentration tank, the oxygen will become deadly a lot faster than a low oxygen mix. Diving down to a depth where oxygen will become toxic is possible only if you use a gas mixture in which the tank is filled with less than 21% oxygen. If you choose to do this, the tank will have more nitrogen in it and will increase the chances of nitrogen narcosis. This can be countered by filling the additional portion of the tank that would normally be oxygen with a gas such as helium. The resulting mixture is something called trimix. The most common misconception about scuba diving is that the most dangerous things that you will encounter will be animals. While animals such as jellyfish, lionfish, sea urchins, and even coral can be dangerous, if you pay attention to what you are touching and whether or not you are intimidating or cornering a fish, you will be fine. Jellyfish scare many people, but really are not a danger while scuba diving. The people who are most at risk are people who have their head above water and people who don't watch where they are swimming. When you are diving, you can easily spot a 5 foot long jellyfish. Lionfish are beautiful fish, however, they are covered in poisonous spines. They are only a threat if you try to corner them or if you try to touch them. Even if you are stung, all that will happen to you is you will feel extreme pain. Everyone knows not to touch sea urchins, but coral might not pose a threat to them. Coral has many sharp polyps that can often sting. Again, the only way to protect yourself would be to use your head and not touch the sharp, stinging polyps. Despite all of these awful dangers, scuba diving is an amazing pastime that only a few people can really relate to. None of the dangers associated with diving should be any reason to discourage you from unlocking this whole new world. If you know your stuff and paid attention while becoming certified, you will be perfectly fine 100% of the time while diving.